one told you my coffee had to be this way. A drop of milk, some cream, your ass better hurry. It's like you're drinking heaven in one little mug. Now I won't share it with you, your friends, your mom, or even your dog. Cause this is my coffee. No, I don't like to share. This is my coffee. Let me drink it in peace. This is my coffee. Now let's talk before work. You see that burn? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first debate of the 2017 Activities Director election. We are coming from the cafeteria at Sunshine Acres. I'm Holly Zadie, and I'll be moderating this debate. Let's introduce our candidates. Here is Norman McGuire. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Sit, sit down. Sit down. Don't, don't, don't spit it. Ralph, put the, chew your food. Chew. Thank you. Hi. And Laura Tremblay. Hello. Hello. Now, Laura, with our first question: With our low budget, how do you plan to spend within your limits? With our budget, I plan to use my paycheck to do some of the activities and to. Oh, I don't know. That was, hold on, I gotta think about that one again. Should I say that over again? Oh, okay, I gotta know. Okay. Well, since this place is such a dive and we have to use our own paychecks to even do anything around here. I plan on using some of that towards some of the activities and then other ways I'm going to do some fundraisers like put the dick on the donkey and everyone's favorite, um, where does the vagina go? Now Norman. I would like to be preferred as Mr. McGuire please. Uh, sorry, Mr. McGuire. I don't like how you say it. Let's move on. How do you plan to spend within your limits? The solution is simple. You see, we've had a low budget for many, many, many years now, and really that's because we have idiots running this place. You see, we need to raise more funds. And the way to raise more funds is just easy ways, because that's all I'm about. I pretty much, Norman McGuire, he's easy. It, it just rings. It just rolls off the tongue. And my easy solution would be the easiest thing you could do is bake sales. I mean, everyone loves baked goods. I mean, a lot of, we should have a lot of staff partake in this because he might have some recreational ingredients that he might put in the bake the baked goods. But we'll just leave them out of it. We might do some drug testing after the bake sale, but we'll raise money. You know, the the easy and legal way. And I'm not gonna. Unlike my opponent, where she's going to be getting her magical funds from her own paycheck like she likes to claim, we're going to do it legally. So, that's my solution. I won the debate. Good night. You need to get your ass back here. This debate done. ain't over. What are you, scared? Huh? You scared? Huh? You scared to go against me? Huh? Huh? It's almost my lunch time. You need to get back here. Well, you're going to have to wait. Son of a bitch. Laura, do you feel... The patient's insurance or state funding should cover their expenses or should they pay out of pocket? Explain your stance. Um, no, I do not believe they should pay out of their pocket. They've worked hard their whole entire life and I believe that their insurance and all their expenses should be paid for. They did their part in the community, now it's our time to do our part for them. And the ball rolls on and on and on. Now Mr. McGuire, do you feel that the patient's insurance or state funding should cover their expenses or should they pay out of pocket? Explain your stance. Bring that again, I'm paying attention. Should they pay out of pocket? Explain your stance. We do not need state funding. All right, the patients here 
I mean, they have enough money. Some of them have killed people for money. They should have enough in their bank accounts. They should pay out of pocket. All right, that's the reason we don't have a big budget is because we're allowing the money to go to these psychopaths, and we can't have that. So what we need is to have them pay for this. All right, pay for this. They're already paying by living in this crap hole. They need to pay their own way. That's just my stance. Okay, next question. Laura, if you could change the activity program, what would you change? Well, I would change some of the activities. I would add new ones like human bowling. Um, that's a fan favorite around here. And um, Hungry Hungry Hippo. Um, they stopped that 10 years ago. Um, I guess um, Cindy Lock, which is one of my favorite patients, <laughs> Uh, she went all crazy on the hippo, and the hippo bit her. So she's been recovering from that forever, and um, we're going to bring it back. Mr. McGuire. I would change everything, because quite frankly, our activities department sucks. You see, the last activities director was caught gambling at the basement of this place, also running a prostitution ring. Okay, so that put everything in the crap hole, just like the rest of this building. So what I plan to do is build from the bottom up. By brick by brick, I will make this activities program a great again. You see, it says right here, let's make activities great again, and that's what I plan to do. I am going to rebuild this department to the greatest it can be. Okay, so put your faith in me. Are we done here? No. Damn it. Laura. Explain some ideas you have for major activities or field trips in the winter, spring, summer, and fall. Well, in the fall, I plan to go apple picking um, and see how many dentures we can pull out of our mouth in one bite. Um, in the winter, I plan on snowball fights that have full of Xanax. Um, in the springtime, we will plant um, flowers and whether we smoke them in the end or not is up to the patients. Um, and in the summertime, um, I just plan on relaxing and catching up with all the other activities that stressed us out during the winter and the spring. Mr. McGuire. That's a good question. Oh, you want my answer right now? Yes. Okay. We ready? For the fall. We're going to go rake my leaves in front of my house. I mean, that gives the patients, they, they get to get out and enjoy the fresh air and the nice breeze, the nice autumn breeze. They also get their exercise by, you know, raking, walking. What comes after fall? Winter. Thank you. For the winter, we're going to plow. I mean, these streets are not going to plow themselves. So I have a very, very generous great uncle that owns his own plowing business and he is gracious, gracious, graciously, graciously, gracefully, graciously, graciously, okay, write that down, graciously, okay, graciously will lend us his plow trucks. I mean, that, that, that's just great for everybody, that helps everybody. The, the community will get shoveled streets and the patients will get to ride huge Trucks. What's better than driving trucks? Now the spring, that's going to be a little bit more difficult since, well, because spring is just summer's bitch. For the summer, we're just going to stay inside because if I'm out in the sun too long, I'm going to die. Laura, how do you plan to learn from mistakes made by the previous activities director? Well, I believe the previous um, activities director made a lot of mistakes. Um, he would always screw his assistants in his office, and I find that very inappropriate. If we're not going to do it as a group and, in, and invite people, then we should not be doing it at all. It's called activities for a reason. I give that's an activity, but there was only two people there, so that's not an activity. It's supposed to be a group activity. So I will learn to invite everybody when I do an activity. 
Mr. McGuire. Man, this place makes horrible, makes horrible coffee. coffee. Okay, okay, first, first of all, I'm not going to open a prostitution ring out of this place because this is not a prostitution ring kind of place. This is a place of respect. I'm going to bring respect back to this facility because, quite honestly, before our last activities director fiasco, this place lost its respect. I mean, come on. We have a facility that Charles Manson would be disappointed with, okay? I would be embarrassed for any crazy bastard who has to come in here and see what kind of place this is. And I am going to do everything I can to make sure that this place gets the respect it deserves, or at least the respect that I deserve. I don't care about the rest of these bitches. Now, Laura. What are you doing? Oh, that's a hot selfie right there. Gotta Instagram that bitch. Hashtag I bang me. Okay. What were you saying, Council? Back to you, Laura. What is one responsibility as an activities director that you dislike performing and why? Well, I have to be honest here. Um, we have one activity that is very, very annoying. There's a lot of bending over involved. My legs get tired. And I think there's too much computer work uh, involved. Um, as long as we're keeping these residents happy, I don't understand why we have to chart on every single one of them. I don't know why it can't be a group chart, but we have to go individual. And I just think that is way too much. It takes time away from me, from the patients, and I just don't agree with it. She did this. Mr. McGuire, same question for you. I don't think I can answer that in an open setting. This isn't court. You're not on trial. You are making me feel like I am on trial. Do not badger me. Okay, next question then. What was the first question? Now you got me pissed. What is one responsibility as an activities director that you dislike performing and why? Okay, it's pretty much having to talk to other people. Because I am the kind of person that, believe it or not, would rob somebody the wrong way. And I don't mean that in a dirty way. I don't need a scandal on my ass. Don't take that one either. Do not, do not, do not write that down. Ralph, God damn it! put the pencil away, Ralph. You're not supposed to have a pencil, what are you doing? Leave Ralph alone. Ralph is a bastard. Are we going to have a pee break? Please say yes. After you answer the next question. I really have to go. Sister's going to piss her pants. Laura, what do you plan to do with the patients who aren't allowed off their wards? How do you plan to include them? Well, I plan to expand it with a glass a whole big glass room so they can go down there and it makes it feel like they're outside but they're really not outside and they're safe and I'm going to bumper pad the floor and the sides. Mr. McGuire. I'm not going to do anything with them because there's a reason they're on maximum security wards. Okay? They're insane. Okay? What I'm going to do to make sure that they do not interfere with our activities, I'm going to build a wall. Okay, and they're gonna cave for the wall from the money out of their own pockets that they should be paying everything with. So that's my idea, and it's a perfect one. Next question. Laura, how would you deal with a difficult patient or family member? Well, for one, I would offer them a drink, and I would have a calm down something in that drink. 
Um, I would have them wait in a room for 10 minutes so it would take effect. And then I would bring them in and we would talk about it and try to see and come up with some solutions um, so everybody is happy. And then I'm going to take a drink myself. Mr. McGuire, how would you deal with a difficult patient or family member? I will punch them in the face. I'm ready to piss my pants. <laughs> I thought I smelled rotten piss. Laura, how would you deal with or resolve a matter with orderlies who didn't want to let the activities be done as they are under the RN and not the activity director? Well, that's easy. I would kick them in the vagina. Problem solved. They go down, they hurt, they're out. I'm in. Done deal. Same question for you, Mr. McGuire. I, I would, would do, do the normal, respectful thing. And that's to tell them to back the hell off. Because who doesn't like activities? Activities should be fun. Alright, they should be fun. Not like it's a big deal to everybody else. If you're not partaking in my activities, I don't need your opinion. I need the patient's opinion, which I still don't care about, but that's not the point. The people who do not like to have fun, I don't want to live in their America. Okay, this is America. We need to have fun. Laura, how do you plan to include activities that tie into the local community? Well, I plan on getting together with the people in my head to talk about it. And then we plan on putting out flyers and we want to put attractive things on the flyers that's going to attract someone's attention. So if you're walking by and you see like a, um, I don't know, like a corkscrew and a dildo, um, what are you going to look at first? Me? It's obvious, but some people might pick the corkscrew. So I would put dildos all over my posters and the community would come running, unlike my opponent, who does not think like that. I'm coloring SpongeBob. Mr. McGuire, how do you plan to include activities that tie into the local community? Well, for one, my great uncle is graciously, 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 right? Graciously, graciously, he's graciously letting us use his plow business to plow the streets. I think that's nice. But if that's not enough for you, here's another thing I'm going to do. My cousin, three times removed, is a fine manager at the local strip club down the block. And come to find out, they've been closed for health reasons. And apparently they need some cleaning done of stuff I don't want to really ask about right at this moment. But I am offering our services to clean that fine establishment, okay? We need a clean, a very, very clean Miss Kitty's Bar and Grill, okay? And we need that for America. Laura, back to you. How does your experience as orderlies help you in this position? Well, it kind of really doesn't because I go home and drink every day. There's no authority, there is no nothing. And I plan on, once I get into activities, I plan on going further. But that's another election that we will get into at another time and date. The same question goes for you, Mr. McGuire. Oh, you actually want me to answer? Yes. <laughs> I mean, who knows these psychotic bastards better than an orderly? I mean, we feed them. We unfortunately have to bathe them and toilet them. We know everything about them. So why shouldn't an experienced orderly have this position? Okay, that makes sense. It makes sense, and that's what we need in this position is a sensible director. Can you hear me? I got hair in my mouth. I think, I think my, my microphone, microphone is broken. broken. 
She broke it. I literally had nothing to do with it. I don't know why he- Don't try to deny it, you broke it, bitch. Really, Dick? Look, look at me. Look, you see this? This works. And you would not know what that She's feels harassing like. me, Kendall. Was it my fault? No, it was not. What are you gonna do about it? Laura, what is one or more things you've done in the workplace to contribute to be a more positive environment? Well, I try to smile. I mean, that's positive, you know? I mean, I get out of bed and sometimes I'm really pissed off, you know, because I don't want to come in and do activities at the moment because, you know, I haven't had my coffee or getting rushed or I haven't had my relaxer, but, you know, it is what it is. Mr. McGuire, same question. For legal reasons, I can't answer. Laura, give an example of how you've contributed to a team. Um, well, I'll give you an example. I was walking down the hall the other day and one of my patients was sitting in the hall drawing on the wall. So instead of getting after her, I asked her, I said, Mary, can I please have what you're drawing with or do you have another one? And she gave me a different color and her and I decided to draw a big mural. Now, instead of getting after her and having her hate me, I joined in with her. See, some of these people argue and the next thing you know, patients are going crazy and then we have to call in the psych and then they're getting strapped down and it's just absolutely ridiculous. So I just join in. So if there's a patient beating somebody up, do I tell on them? No, I join in. See, it's team effort. Mr. McGuire, I need you to give an example of how you've contributed to a team. I bought cake once. Uh. People tend not to like me. Laura, describe a time when you disagreed with the policy and how you handled it. Well, I, uh, you see this line right here? There's a reason why I have this. I have one at home. I tried bringing him in for show and tell as an activity, and those people told me to get my lion out of the building. And I said, F you, it's my lion. He is very friendly. I know he just scratched an old man, but that was not his fault. He had raw meat. Don't have raw meat if you don't want a lion to attack you. And they made me take him out, and I couldn't do the activity, so I called out the next two days and said, F it. Mr. McGuire. Okay, you're gonna be here for a while. It happened on the second day I was employed here. But come to find out, you can't park in the fire zone. And then, just last month, when I was just minding my own business and taking a picture of the cute Santa A's ass, but apparently that's an invasion of privacy. But who was I harming? Who was I harming? Nobody. Then just yesterday, I just happened to see an unclaimed breakfast tray who got that the patient denied their breakfast. So I was doing this place a favor for not wasting food, but apparently that condones a write-up? I don't think so. Why should we have people go hungry? Okay, Mr. McGuire, your time is up for this question. I'm not done yet. We only have a certain amount of time. Now, Laura, do you believe there should be a patient council that suggests new activities? Um, no. All me. Right here. This sister right here. Mr. McGuire, do you believe there should be a patient council that suggests new activities? No, because people who reside here are batshit crazy. You see, we have people here who think they are Stephen King. We have people here who think that John F. Kennedy is their brother. We have people who think they are married to Meryl Streep. And we have somebody, Herbie, I'm not naming any, any names, but we have people here who think they invented the lines on a piece of paper. 
Okay? So, do you think these are the people who should be in charge of a council who gets to decide what activities they can and cannot do? Well, we're better off with that than with you in charge. God only knows where we end up. And we have people here who think the best activity is to go to the basement, hold a seance, and resurrect Freddy Krueger. Now tell me, should those people be in charge of a council? I don't think so. Laura. Since a lot of the job in requires the use of computers, how comfortable are you with them? Um, I'm very comfortable with them. You know, it took me a little while to understand it around here, but they taught me and they got me an email and I f***ed it up for like two weeks, you know. Messed up all kinds of shit. Got everyone's name f***ed up, but eventually after a while it worked, you know. It's the way it is. Computer's a little hard sometimes, but I have an iPhone. So, I am a little up to date, <laughs> um, but I got a hold of it. I still don't fucking like it, but I got a hold of it. Mr. McGuire. Well, I'm pretty comfortable with them, actually. I mean, I'm very tech savvy. Savvy? Savvy? Right? Savvy? Okay. I'm very tech savvy. And not to throw any dirt at anybody, but someone's certain relative has used computers to look up midget porn. Oh no, bitch, you ain't even now, going I'm there. I'm not naming okay? any names, Laura. But, but that's, that's something I don't think an activities activity director should have on their conscience, especially when they have to use a computer on a daily basis. How can we trust her or him, for that matter, because I'm not throwing out any names, Laura. How can we trust that person on our computers when anybody could access her account or her information on these computers and look up midget porn. We don't need that. Mm -mm. Laura, what are some of your biggest weaknesses? Well, I f swear a lot. See, I just did it, didn't even know I did it. It just slipped right out of my mouth. I try not to teach it to the residents, but every now and then, excuse me, I mean patience. <laughs> um, every now and then, someone will say, Oh, I broke my leg. My catheter came flying out. I don't know where they get the language, but that is one of my weaknesses that I'm going to try and work on. Mr. McGuire, what are your biggest weaknesses? Well, I can't be handcuffed too, too long because my wrists start, you know, to bleed. But that's a personal question there, counsel. But if you're talking about in a work sense, um, getting along with people. Because... I don't, I don't like, like them. them. Laura, what are some of your long-term goals? One of them is to kick my opponent's ass. Um, another long-term goal is to make it so we have a nice sitting area outside with shade and sun, nice gazebo, a little smoking area in case someone wants to light one up. You never know. A um, little place, a little bar like to have outside. That would be nice. Um, so I plan on making it so much better around there. Um, I'm going to expand the building, uh, do all kinds of different stuff if I have the permission. Oh, wait a minute. I'm paying it out of my own paycheck. I don't need permission. The things I could do. I'm going to do great things if I win, which I'm going to win. Mr. McGuire, what are some of your long-term goals? Well, one day I like, you know, to settle down and have a couple of kids and just retire, but, you know, that's not because I'm going to be a forever alone, so I don't think that's ever going to happen. <laughs> Until then, I'm just going to, you know, sit and cry in my own self-pity and drink margaritas until the cows come home, pretty much. Uh, we're actually talking about with this job. I know. I was just, just letting you know that. My long-term goals for this place is just, we gotta make this place better. I mean, simply put. The activity is around here for years, and I've been here for five. Five, right? Five years. And the activities has just, been really, really bad. They sucked 
quite frankly, to put it bluntly, and you know, it kind of blunts out a lot of these bitches like to use, but bluntly, this place has sucked. The, this department has sucked. And I am sick and tired of hearing about that, but if I am elected this position, I am not going to say or going to let people demean this position, this department, this needs respect, like I've said earlier. We need to make activities great again. So vote for me. Don't vote for this. Vote for me. Laura, with this position, you must work closely with Pearl. Describe your working relationship with her and how it helps or hinders you. Well, Pearl is a great boss. Um, she understands me. Um, she tries to talk to me at my level. So sometimes when I go in her office, because you know she called me in there, um, she'll be like, um, "Laura, we need to f talk." And right there, she has my attention. So you know she's cool. She tries to be fair. Um, sometimes I think there's people around that she's not fair to, um, but that's because they asked for it. I really believe that she can do great things in this building and I plan one night to do a little tipsy with her and put some ideas in her head, make her sign some papers, and then we'll be on our way to a better thing. Mr. McGuire. Pearl has to say. Yes. Damn it. So we have come to the end of this debate. You both have two minutes for your closing arguments. Um, Laura, you're first. Go ahead. You have two minutes. I will only say this once. Vote for me. You want to be aligned with me and the king of your jungle? Vote for me. My resources tell me that my opponent, once in a blue moon, does a bit of this. And then flex comes out. Do you really want flex coming out in the middle of an activity? I'm pretty sure not. Vote for me. If you want to be able to swear and go outside and drink under your gazebo, vote for me. If you want to take over, vote for me. Me. Vote for me. Right here. I use my own paycheck. My opponent is in cahoots with I don't even know who. My resources tell me all bad things, but I can't get into that right now. Ooh. Vote for me. Mr. McGuire, you have two minutes with your closing arguments. I don't have much to say because I think I have covered every base here today. But, just in case you guys don't see it my way, hold on one second. Uh, where the hell is he going? Did I, is this, oh, I did not get the memo that this was over yet. I have brought cupcakes for everybody, not you, because you're my opponent. I love you to death, but right now, you're my enemy. You can suck it. Who wants cupcakes? <laughs> No, it's covered. Unless I go. <laughs> <laughs> no, because this place is crazy. We have a couple re residents that have residents. They're patients. You heard me. Shut the f up, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> Microphone. <laughs>